Action. What's up, guys? It's Epic Analysis, getting ready to give you guys a new weekly overview for this week. Today is July 7th, 2019. We just entered quarter three of 2019, so let's finish this off strong. Um, for the first part, I'm going to go over is going to be GBP, JPY. So just uh, starting from the monthly chart, you guys can see from the start of this new year, uh, GJ started up at these highs right here. Yeah, around uh, what is that? 156, around 156 resistance on around January 2018. The next month, it gave us a strong bearish engulfing candle. So from the start of this right here, we we got a continuation of the overall bearish trend. So from this point, from from this bearish engulfing price pulled up, and it gave us, and it started making a significant variance of lower lows and lower highs. Right here, price spiked up, gave us an evening store, rejected, price pulled down, pulled back up, pulled back down lower, pulled up one more time, gave us a second hit to the trend line, pulled down, made new lows. This wick right here is the flash crash, so if you would just look at the body close as the traditional low, price made a new low right here, pulled back up, made a new lower high, gave us a third, a third hit rejection off the trend line, the price eventually gave us the strong bearish engulfing candle, and then now we're currently around, what is that, 135.8. So um, let's go down to the weekly chart. So overall, um, since price gave us such a strong bearish, uh, a bearish correction, or I wouldn't say correction because the overall trend is uh, bearish, but ever since price gave us a strong bearish move to the downside, it's found support one, two, three, four, five, six, almost on seventh weeks. So overall, this 135.50, 135 support region is a critical region for price to hold above. Now, if we could get price to hold above the 135.50 region, we could potentially start seeing price pull back up towards this 137, 137.50 region. Going back down to the daily chart. Let me just... Adjust this real quick. Okay, so uh, based off the daily chart, you can kind of draw somewhat of a counter trend line right here. So you got your breakout. So now we're looking for price to potentially pull up, and we're looking for uh, what price could potentially uh, is it if, if it's either going to potentially pull up and find resistance, or if it's going to continue its bullish strength and uh, correct itself back up a little bit higher. So as of right now, since we have these highs around 137, 138 region, we could potentially draw a Fibonacci retracement from this high down to this low. And price is creeping on a 38.2 retracement, but um, overall, I would like to see a higher pullback if we can get that. So if price could pull up towards, um, let's say 137, 138 region would be a, a would it be better for this pair because GJ moves heavy in pits? So a deeper pullback is sometimes is, is what you're going to expect opposed to looking for a shorter correction. And when you wait for that deeper pullback, you have a higher probability of the trade also. So I would like to see GJ do something similar to this. So if it can uh, – put up this right on accident. So, yeah, if it can pull up towards, let's say – around this region or even a little bit higher and then if it were to find resistance in this high right here were to hold then overall we'll look for price to find that resistance and then correct itself back down and continue the trend back down towards 135 like that so overall gj i'm looking for price to pull up find resistance around the 137 region potentially 138 if price breaks above those regions, then we understand that GJ is just due for a deeper correction. But now if it were to go through the 137, 130, 137 through 137.50, um, then I would look for price to either find resistance and look to take it back down to the downside, back towards 135, taking back up to the lower high to create a new lower low. So GJ is pretty simple. Um, let's move up to the next pair. Um, I posted this in the Telegram last week, EuroGBP. 
Um, so let's just start off on the weekly real quick. So as you guys can see, um, around this, t- where is the start of this year? So around this time right here, where these significant highs of these last two weeks is around the starting of this year. So if you can see that this start of this year, all it did was find resistance at this previous key level. So all these wicks did was retest this previous key level. Let me um, just draw, just so you guys can see it a little bit visual. So like that. So ever since that price dropped, gave us a double bottom down here, and then ever since that, price has been going up for the previous, what, probably two and a half, yeah, probably two and a half months. So currently we're around this area right here. Um, let me go to the daily chart so we can see it a little bit better in detail. So price has been, it looks like it's been having some type of exhaustion. Um, and it's looking like it's getting ready to potentially find resistance and continue back down towards the 89, 88.50 region. So I would like to see price break out of this channel. Of course, it, a higher probability trade would be to wait for the breakout of the channel and then hopefully you would get some type of correction back up and then you would sell it back on the correction back up towards the breakout and then you would look to take it back towards the previous any type of previous resistance or previous support so this blue box region is around this last previous resistance so that's what i'm saying and this last previous resistance also um, goes along with this kind of consolidation region, but right where it starts at, it's all within the same region. So if we do get this breakout retest, then we could look to see price pull back down to at least this area around 88.50, 0.8850. Now, if we could get a break of that, then price could potentially pull down towards the 0.88. But overall, the 0.8850 is um, it's, it's pretty good trade. Uh, let's see how many pips that would be. As of right now, price is at 0. 0.89, um, 0. 0.896. So, you could catch about 100 pips, a little bit over 100 pips. So, um, overall, I would like to see EG hold below 0. 0.90. If price holds below 0. 0.90, then this trade should play out, and I would like to see price pull down towards 0 0.85 after a breakout and pullback and then continuation. So that's pretty much EG, and I'll also be sending updates on the markups throughout the telegram throughout the week, so keep an eye out for that. Um, next pair I'm going to go into is going to be Euro USD. So this is Euro USD currently on the monthly chart. As you can see, that it's been pretty much bearish, and then we finally came into this 1.12 support region that looks like a key support region. Price is having trouble breaking below that at the moment, and we had finally got a strong bullish engulfing candle right, right here at the previous month. So now, overall, we're just looking to see when price pulls back, is it going to break below, back below 112 or if it's going to continue up towards 113, 114. So now, understanding that, we go to the weekly chart. Seeing this on the weekly chart, you can clearly see that what price found support at kind of gave us a double bottom. That's that bullish engulfing candle. Price gave us a correction back towards 112. 112 is now acting as support gave us another bullish engulfing candle. This current uh, candlestick pattern right here would be an evening star. So overall, um, with the evening star, we would need to see price hold above 112 because this evening star could just be the correction of this bullish engulfing or this evening star could be the correction of a price to drop back to probably towards like 111 or this uh, supply zone or demand zone, I'm sorry. So overall, we would just need to see this 112, one point, anywhere from 112 to 1.18 support. That would need to hold for this, for the bullish bias to still play out. And if 112 to 1.18 breaks, then price is possibly going to pull back down to this demand zone. And if we get a break of this demand zone, then um, overall we just got a new lows. And then you would probably just uh, redrew your fit from this high to this low. 
So now going to the daily chart with all that, you can kind of see that same structure of price finding support within this demand zone. Price pulling up, giving us a higher high possibly because price broke this previous structure, these previous highs, this week, this week, this week. Price pulled up, fell into this supply zone around 113, a little bit shy of 1.135. Gave us another correction back down to that key 112 support region that we were just talking about. Uh, found support, gave us a new uh, higher low. Price pulled up and made a new higher high. Price uh, found resistance around the 114 region. And then last week we got a pullback. And then for NFP, we got this last candle back down towards 112. So for this week, this is what I'm saying. Overall, we would need to see price hold above 112. Or if we get that break and it breaks below this previous low, then we could see it possibly pull back down to this demand zone. And we'll see if price wants to either bounce or break from this demand zone. So the one thing that you can do, um, probably you can see it on the better on the, let me see. You can draw a trend line. So with this trend line, you probably got a break already. So because it's early in the week, you just don't want to count this break as a, as, as a real break because this could be a fake out. So this is why I'm saying you kind of need to wait and see how price plays out. So if these lows right here hold, and I, like I said, that 112 to 1.18, region holds then overall i'm still bullish and i'm not going to take this trend line break i'm just going to take it with a grain of salt it's not going to be you know the, the biggest thing in the world because overall i feel like the, the higher low has more higher probability than the trend line break so in order for me to to uh back off of my bullish bias like i said these lows uh, let me move my arrow so these lows right here would have to break. So price would have to break below those arrows like that. I mean, those lows right there. And then if that were to happen, then I would look for price to pull back down, like I said, to this uh, demand zone. But now overall, if these lows hold and then this is the new higher low, then we could potentially look for price to pull back up towards 113, possibly 114, if not higher, because you could possibly draw a fib from this low to this high like that, you would have possibly had a 88, 78, around 78 to 88.6 retracement. And then you're, you would have looked to take it back up towards possibly 113 to 114. And then TP3 would be around 1.145. So that's EU. And then let me go over this last pair before kicking it off to Brandon. Um, the US dollar index. So since, um, the first week of the of the month has just passed last week. NFP has already passed. So uh, the market settled down a little bit more. You could kind of, you know, trade. You could kind of trade with um, like a more sense of patience because now, it's, you know, you don't have that sense of, you don't know where the market is going, this and that. You, you know, the market kind of cools down and gets back towards, you know, doing how it normally does uh, throughout like the beginning of the weeks and the middle of the week. So. Overall, with the DXY, um, pretty much we look at the DXY for any USD uh, dollar base pair. So we look at the DXY for uh, Euro USD, GBP USD, USD CAD, USD Chef. Of course, you know you don't want to just look at the DXY, and because that's going up, you don't you just go sell EU. It's always going to be a little bit more complicated than that, but. Overall, if you could kind of get the base for what the dollar is doing, then it helps you with those other dollar-based pairs. So overall, you can kind of see that price pulled up towards us. Uh, let's just start off on the weekly real quick. You can kind of see that price pulled up and made new highs around this 98, which I explained previous times in the past, where this 98 was going to be a key resistance. And then price pulled up here multiple attempts, and it failed to break uh, numerous of times. So after so after the after the multiple rejections, price gave us a strong breakout with this bearish engulfing candle. Price broke out, pulled back, gave us a retest of the 9750, another key region that I explained multiple times. And then after that, price gave us one more push down towards the 96, gave us our third trend line bounce, 
Now price pulled back up and gave us a new potential lower high. So now with this potential lower high and this third trend line hit, we would need price to stay below 97.80, 98 resistance in order for uh, this lower, for this downtrend is, uh, to stay in play. So let's just go to the arrow real quick. So in order for this downtrend to be taken out, these highs right here around 97.8 would need to get broken above. So price would have to pull up like that in order for this downtrend to be invalid. But now if price were to, you know, stall and then, you know, let's say two, three days go by and price is pulled up towards 97.50 again, but it still hasn't broke above this high, then overall the downtrend is still in play and we'll just be waiting for price to show his hand, give us that candle, uh, or any type of candlestick reversal or any type of candlestick continuation pattern. And then we will look to take it back down towards a previous support. So if price does pull back, so if it does pull above, if it does pull above, as long as it doesn't take this out, this is just a false break. It would need to take this out for it to be a true break. And then overall, we'll be looking for price to give us any type of reversal around this region and then we'll be looking to take it back down towards at first 97 to 96.50 and then potentially 96 support so overall you know everything's pretty simple you just kind of need to wait for uh the market and price to show his hand and give you guys a little bit more uh confirmation on uh a reversal or any type of continuation before entering don't just enter because it looks like a sell now because it may not be ready just yet this is why we're teaching you guys how to you know uh go more in depth with analysis have better patience so you guys can start you know making money from the market and seeing some type of success so uh so those are going to be the pairs i'm going to go over and let me kick it off to brandon blackwell right now so he could give it his overview over the pairs that he's looking and then um we're going to be posting other chart markups throughout the Telegram, so keep an eye for that. And hope you guys have a good week. All right, what's going on, everybody? Solid, solid analysis from Ryan right there. Uh, I'm going to be giving my take on a few pairs. And this is a big week for the dollar. For the, for the US dollar and for Canadian dollar. Um, so big economic events this week. So that's definitely what I'm gonna be, you know, having some of my focus on when it comes to some of the pairs I'm looking at. Now, starting with USD Chef, um, if you've been following the group, you know we've been, you know, pretty much eyeing USD Chef. We caught this drop up here, just looking at the weekly chart here. Um, price, or even if we go, yeah, just I could just look at the weekly here. You can see price basically pushed up into these supply levels, right? It pushed, it it overextended past this high here and then it actually completely turned around and dropped. So just looking at how this previous week ended, well, not the previous week, you see this strong um, bearish engulfing candle you had here. All right, that was after the retest. It broke down and retested this level, gave you a bullish engulfing candle um, to end last week close. So now we're kind of, sitting on our hands to wait for the next move uh, remember it's all about probability so looking at the dollar index how you know ryan just showed you guys it's at a level where it looks like it basically corrected to actually continue downwards so if that does happen for with the dollar this week then my bias you know that will help the bearish bias when it comes to usd chef but just looking at this here you see at this double top after this double top price broke down and just completely just just a clear downtrend creating lower, lower lows and lower highs. So now here on the daily, it gave this new low. Now it's, it's correcting up to my trend line. So based off where, where price is at now, um, I wouldn't enter right here, even though, you know, this does look like it, you know, based off of just looking at it now, you know, I would like to see a correction to the downside, at least back down towards nine, seven, right? And if it breaks this level, then even further, you know, even further below. But it's still Sunday. It's still early. So we kind of want to sit on our hands. I kind of want to wait for more confirmation, you know, because I wouldn't be surprised if price actually decided to, you know, overextend and actually break above my trend line. 
you know, it's retesting this level isn't isn't out of play. Like like that still can happen. But I normally like to see what's happening on, you know, Monday night going into Tuesday London session to let the market show me his hands. But based off this right now, I would like to see USD Chef continue to the downside. All right. But it's all about probability. So chances are if it was to break, give me a break of this trend line, a break and close above this trend line. And then if you had somewhat of a retest, a corrective structure retest, then it could push higher. If it did something like that and kind of pulled back, then my bias will change. My bias will change and I will at least wait, I will watch price, price action when it gets to this level. Because if price comes up and it completely breaks this uh, previous lower high right here, then the bearish bias is invalid, all right? Um, so it's really about just understanding the possibilities, the, the, the probability of each setup. So I will be keeping you guys updated on this pair. Um, overall, I, I would like to see it continue downward, but we kind of waiting, sitting on our hands to see what happens. All right, GVP Chef. USD Chef right there, that's, that's a simple, easy setup, so I don't have to really prolong that. GVP Chef. Um, this is another pair that we've been, you know, watching in this, in our telegram. Um, and you see price has completely just, you know, fell off a cliff. Really, really all the pound pair has been taking a beating. Like they all have been really bearish, but you see, this is just straight drop. Looking at the weekly chart, this is straight drop here. This is a, over a thousand pips of drop, a thousand pips of drop right there. That's one, two, three, four. That's over four or five weeks of drop. So now we're at a strong level of demand. If you look at where I have this, this blue rectangular box drawn, if you look to the left, you always want to look left to go right. So I'm watching price action to see something similar happen right here. I'm looking for that bullish rejection. Just how you got here. Last time price was at this level, this was January of 2019 or actually at the end of December, price rejected off. So I'm looking for that same type of price action to happen over here. I'm looking for that same bullish impulsive move to take off. But I could even go further than that. You know, continue to look left. You look at what price action is showing you and let it show its hand. Over here, price been bouncing, bouncing. Every time it's pretty much found. And this was September and August, July. This is two, over two years ago. So this is a strong level of buyers. All right, on the weekly. So if I work my way down to the daily, you see here, price came down, gave you these wick lows, broke up, is retesting now. Let me see if I go down to the four hour chart. Okay, I have this counter trend line drawn. This counter trend line from this high to this second point all the way through. You see price actually, Price actually broke above. It broke above my counter trend line, but I wouldn't have entered just because it broke above my counter trend line. Whenever I get a break of a counter trend line like this, I always like to see a pullback or correction before I actually look to take the trade. All right. So that's what it's giving me now. It's retesting. So as long as price, as long as price stay above this low that it made here in this demand zone, as long as it stay above here my bias is still bullish. Looking at it right now, I mean, it's not moving much, but you know, it's looking like it's trying to give us a retest down at these levels, right? If price was to come down here to this counter trend line and kind of give me some bullish rejection, that could be an opportunity right there, all right? Something like this. Something like this, if it came down here, around here, if you take a buy there, My stop will be somewhere down towards these lows here. Really, if it comes down there, it will be even safer to put your stop below the low. All right, because this is this is a great risk to reward, even if you're risking 60 to 70 pips. To make 200 to 300 pips, I think that's a good setup. All right, so you can have a nice, it's all about risk to reward, all right? And if you don't understand probabilities when it comes to trading, you're going to look at losing the wrong way. Like losing is okay. It's okay to lose trades, but as long as you're managing your risk and you have good risk to reward management, you don't have to win every trade. You can win, 
you know, very few of your trades and still make money. All right, so that's GBP Chef. My bias, uh, and my bias is bullish. All right, so hold on. Next pair I want to look at um, CAD JPY. I'm expecting, I am expecting uh, CAD to show some weakness this week. Um, last week, we kind of ended on the bullish note. Like if you look at here, looking at CAD JPY on the daily, overall, it's been in a downtrend. As you, you could clearly see, overall price has been in this downtrend. The Canadian dollar has been weak. Right? So looking at that, looking at here on the weekly, how it basically created this new low. It created this new structure low. And now it's pulling up and it's retesting. It's giving you that correction, in my opinion, before it continues to the downside. So I have this counter, I have this uh, descending trend line drawn here from this point all the way through here, all the way through. So this is another pair where I'm kind of sitting on my hands. I want to see, I want to see similar, similar price action, similar bearish price action that you see over here, right? It starts to get some bearish engulfing candles, strong bearish, strong bearish rejection at this level for more confirmation. So I will be looking for certain candlestick formations to actually see how CAD JPY actually want to react. Um, and one thing that I do, if I'm looking at a certain pair, like, you know, if I know it's a big week for like the CAD or, you know, a certain currency pairs, I try to find correlations or I try to find uh, certain things that actually certain it could be a commodity like oil like for example when you're dealing with CAD oil is actually uh it's actually uh correlated it's actually correlated with uh Canadian dollar so that's that's something I that's something I will also look at you know if, if oil seems like it's just super weak then I will start to look at the CAD pairs and see if I see that correlation right so really right here you also correct for a breakout like how to take a trade here you know, you can wait until they actually give you a breakdown of this counter trend line. Give you a breakdown of it. Strong bearish. You can wait for that strong bearish impulse and then catch the correction. Look for a bearish flag correction to take it lower. All right. So with that, with that pair, I also will be updating you guys to see how we're looking. But Overall, I'm liking CAD to show some weakness. All right, even if I go over to uh, USD CAD, for example, USD CAD. USD CAD is at a, 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 a interesting level right now. Looking at this weekly chart, this level that it's at, it's at a key level around 307 if you look left you know a support here this resistance over here right you look way over here it was support over here so this is a key level where you have multiple hits on both sides all right so now it's really at a break or bounce area it's either it's going to bounce from these levels or it's going to completely break this level and then continue even lower all right and i'm not sure if ucad is actually ready to make that type of move um I don't think UCAD is ready to keep taking, but overall, you know, we are expecting downside on USD CAD because that's that's really what's been going on. Just looking at this from a wide view, you see you have the impulse, corrective, corrective channel here, impulse, big corrective channel here. All right. So looking at the previous monthly candle, it's a bearish engulfing. You see, this is when you do a top-down analysis to get an idea of what the market is trying to do. So now that I see this bearish engulfing, yes, my bias overall is still bearish, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to get that correction. And, and that doesn't mean that you can't take, you know, a trade opportunity, um, a counter trade opportunity on a smaller time frame. All right. So seeing that, you know, eventually we're going to get this move. Eventually, you look left to go right. We're going to get this big breakout here. Just how we got it over here, we're going to get that. But I'm expecting a correction before we get that. So if I go down to the weekly, uh, this is also a pair. I, I believe I posted this last week. 
All right. So if you look, I have this counter, this trend line going here up this channel from this from this low to this point all the way through. Price broke out from this, you know, key level around three, four, and now it's at my trend line. All right. And that weekly candle closed as an indecision doji. So I'm expecting some type of correction. Go down to the daily, top down. Uh, let me get rid of some of this here for you. But even just looking at how price reacted last week, um, I had this channel drawn here. You know, it's it's a lot going on because you know I like to I like to use trend lines to really help me see what I'm looking at. But even when we gave you guys this markup over here from this inverted head and shoulders, you see over here you got this inverted head and shoulders. It took off, came back, retested, pushed all the way up this channel. All right. And this is just pure price action. It pushed up this channel, it broke out here. It broke out. After this breakout, whenever you get a breakout and you miss the impulsive breakout, wait for the correction. Wait for the retest. And that's exactly what it did. It retested the structure and it made its way down. All right, that was a that was a textbook setup. And it made it way down, created a new low, and retested my weekly trend line. All right, so that's a lot of drop that it gave us. Now I'm expecting that that corrective wave, all right? Hold on. All right, so the daily candle kind of closed somewhat of an inverted, it looks somewhat like an inverted hammer, all right? We'll go down to the four hour chart. I could take the counter trend line. All right, so right now, price is retesting these lows again. All right, in order for, you know, if you're looking to buy USD cap, um, different ways you could trade it. Even if you was to enter it right here, which honestly isn't a bad entry, your stop loss would need to be below this low here. I remember I, I gave this signal out in the group and the stop loss was at 303, which it actually didn't hit. It actually pulled down a little bit and then took off. So you still could have caught pips out of that. I just had you guys get out of it because I forgot it was NFP and I didn't want you to get caught up in that madness dealing with the dollar. But looking at where we're at now, if you're entering this trade, you know, have your stop loss 15 to 20 pips below this, below this wick here. All right. All right. And let me take it higher. Um, or you can wait for, you know, price to give you an impulse. Wait for price to give you an impulse and a retest. But technically, even though this wasn't a really, it didn't firm, it didn't give you a firm close. It broke out, but as you see, it gave you these wick rejections. All right. So that's not really what I like to see. I like to see more of a firm close and then a retest. So I would like to, you know, definitely want to sit on my hands to see how that's going to react. All right. But judging off of how the CAD is looking, it's looking like if CAD is going to be weak, then definitely you could expect USD CAD to bounce to the upside. All right. Also looking at um, Cash F. So it's another CAD pair to actually give you more confirmation of what the CAD is trying to do. Going to the daily chart, you see price been bouncing from this low late June all the way up here. It's pushing towards this supply level. All right. So at these levels, at these levels, I would like to see price push up a little higher, but I wouldn't be surprised if price broke down here. So what I would be looking for is similar price action over here. You see how you had indecision candles and then it gave you strong bearish, bearish engulfing candles. I wanna see similar price action. I wanna see bearish rejection, all right? It's not, it's not a trade opportunity just yet. It's not showing me enough just yet. But just looking at all the CAD pairs, I would like to see CAD show some bearish weakness. Can even draw, can even draw a trend line and wait for a breakout. All right, so you can wait. You can wait for something like this. You can wait for a strong bearish breakout. All right, look for a retest. 
money is made on the retest. If if I'm not if I'm looking for a breakout and it doesn't give me that retest, then I'm not entering. No retest, no entry. All right. So you can look for something like that. With Cash Chef. All right. Another one is um all cap. This is another one that's at a level. And remember, keep in mind, look at if you're buying this one, that's also showing some cat weakness. And right now, we're at a level of demand. You see this? I, I don't have to have anything on my chart and I could just look at price action and I could tell where we're at and I could tell what I'm looking for, right? So, looking at this, look left look left to go right so i would need to see similar similar rejection similar bullish rejection oh basically right there it gave me that strong rejection i'm looking for the same type of price action i'm looking for a bullish impulse a bullish impulse all right, if you miss the bullish breakout, wait for a retest. All right, so right now it's looking like it's trying to retest these lows. Even if I was to enter down here, I would look for something like this, just hypothetically speaking, if I was entering right here. My stop loss will be 15 to 30 pips below this low. All right, but this is also another one, another uh, good risk to reward. So you could risk, you know, maybe 40, 50 pips where it's at now to make over 100 pips. All right, because yeah, looking at this, I'm expecting, you know, a nice wave up. All right, and that goes in line with all the cap pairs that I, I basically just went over, all right? One more, also, if you was to look at oil, oil will help your bias out when it comes to CAD. You see, um, price has been moving in this downtrend, all right? Now it actually pulled up, and retest. it broke out of this trend line completely. Now it gave you this firm retest here. You see, you got this bearish engulfing candle here on the daily. Now all of this right here, I believe is just correction, correction to go lower. It's, it's correcting, retesting after that, bull, that bearish engulfing candle on the daily. Four hour. Yeah, so price is pretty much retesting this these structure levels that it broke. All right, so you can expect maybe possibly get it'll possibly pull up a little higher. You know, that's still within play to retest those levels and then continue downward. And if that happens, that's actually confirming our CAD weakness. All right, because those go in line with each other. All right, so that's that, that's it. I'm gonna leave you with that. Um, again, you know, we're gonna keep you guys updated with you know different pairs that we're looking at. We're gonna keep you guys updated if we see trade opportunities. Um, and just remember, study, practice, risk management. If you're taking signals, make please be sure to make uh, take proper risk management because every trade is not gonna win. Every trade is not gonna be a winner. Um, but if you do decide to take them, risk management is the, is the main thing we you know we want you to make sure you do. Okay. All right. So with that. Hope everybody has a blessed trading week and let's catch some pips. See you on the next one.